Welcome to another episode of ProSoft Technology Video Training. Today we're looking at the PLX51 PBS Gateway, configured as a slave on a Profibus network, allowing a Profibus master to communicate with a Compact Logics or Control Logics processor on Ethernet IP. The slave configuration is available for both the PLX51 PBS and the PLX51 PBM module. However, the standalone master mode is only available with the PBM. So in this tutorial, we'll be setting up the PLX51 PBS as a slave and integrating it into a Siemens master software, TIA Portal in my case. On the Ethernet IP side, we'll have a Control Logics or Compact Logics processor, and we'll be talking to a Siemens S7 processor acting as a Profibus master on the Profibus DP network. So as a quick overview, we'll be covering downloading and installing ProSoft PLX50 configuration utility software, creating a new project for our gateway, configuring the PLX51 for both the EIP and Profibus DP networks, and uploading the PLX51 EDS file from the gateway in RS links. Importing the PLX51 GSD file for the gateway in TIA portal. And finally, we'll be getting the gateway recognized and operational in each of the configuration softwares. The first thing that we need to do is download and install the ProSoft PLX50 configuration utility software from the ProSoft Technology website. This is a free application that's used to configure the PLX51, PBM, and PBS gateways, and it will allow you to do all the necessary configurations and mapping to make the module an integral and useful part of your program. So once we have the file downloaded, just install the configuration utility to your PC by following the prompts. And when it's done, go ahead and open it up and we'll create a new project. The first time you connect the PLX51 to your network, you'll need to launch the DHCP server and assign it an IP address on your subnet. It's this button here in the menu bar. There is our gateway. You can click Assign, and on the window that opens, I'll enter the IP address that I know is available on the local network. I'll check the box for a static address, and click OK. The bar should turn green, and this will let you know that the gateway is now connected. And we can close this window. Next, we'll right-click on the new project under the Project Explorer and select Add. On the Add New Device window, select the PLX51 PBS and click OK. This takes us to the main configuration window. You can see we have six tabs at the top. The General, Profibus, and Logics tabs encompass the basic configuration for the gateway. The two Modbus tabs will only be enabled if that mode is selected. And at the time of this recording, it's not yet been released. On the General tab, you give the gateway an instance name. You can also give it a description if you like. Now the instance name should match the name that you use in your RS Logix I.O. configuration. It doesn't actually need to match in order to work, but it simplifies things. You would then enter the IP address, and you can just click the Browse button to the right of the address field to bring up the target browser, where you can see all the PLX50 gateways on your network. Select your PBS module, and it'll have the IP address that you just assigned. Click OK, and the IP will appear in the address field. For the operating mode selector, we have just two modes to choose from. You can choose to have it in slave or quiet mode, where it will just monitor traffic on the network. I'll set it to slave mode. For interface, you can choose EIP or Modbus, but for the time being, EIP is the only option. We'll move on to the Profibus tab. As you would expect, this is where you configure your Profibus network parameters. We have several sections, but for the slave mode, all you need to do is set the baud rate. Now, if you already know what baud rate your Profibus master is set to, you can pick that specific rate. Otherwise, auto mode will detect the rate of the master and adjust the module baud rate accordingly. And you can click apply when you're done. And then moving on to the Logix tab, we can configure the connection to a Logix processor and whatever I.O. or other devices may lie beyond. 
Now the Ethernet IP connections count will depend on how much I.O. you'll be connecting to. One EIP connection should be good for 500 bytes of input data and 496 bytes of output data. So if you need to transfer more data than that, you can add up to four connections. I'm going to leave it at one for this training, and I'll click the Browse button to locate my Compact Logix controller. Once I have it, I'll click OK, and it will appear in the Controller Path field. Under the Advanced tab, we can enable Device Level Ring and set our connection to an NTP server. So if you plan on connecting two devices on a DLR, you should enable DLR here in order to make use of the redundancy features. And for your information, if you don't use DLR, then the two ports on the module can act as a two port switch. As for the NTP feature, if you do need to use it for your application, you would enter in the IP address of your NTP server here. So now we've configured the basic module settings. We can move on to configuring our Profibus slave profile. This is what the Profibus master will see. So I'll bring in a new Profibus device. On the Profibus configuration tab, set the node address. And on the slot configuration tab, we'll bring in 32 bytes of input and 32 bytes of output. And this will require me to add two 16-byte inputs and two 16-byte outputs. These are single integers by default. If you need a different data type, you can change it here. When you're done, you can click Apply and close this window. If you wanted to add additional devices with the same parameters, you can easily do so by copying and pasting the first device. And we can actually simulate up to 10 slave nodes for the purpose of transferring up to 1,536 bytes of data. And just for your information, if you're trying to transfer that much data, you'll definitely need multiple EIP connections. Once you have your devices all squared away here, it's a good time to save the project and export the latter file that will import into Studio 5000 in order to get the Compact Logix talking to our gateway on EIP. Right click on the PBS module and select Generate Logix L5X. In the Export Options window, we'll select the destination where the latter file will go and click Save. And FYI, this is going to be a routine file, not a run file. And the EDS file for the PLX51 is embedded in the module. So we'll open up RS Links Classic, locate the unknown device on the network with the IP address that we assigned to the PLX51 PBS, right clicking on it and selecting Upload EDS from Device. Just keep clicking next through all the prompts. And when it's done, we should see that the PBS is now recognized inside RS Links. It's got its own little icon. And this gives us an AOP that will make the EIP side of the gateway recognizable to the Logix program. So moving on to Studio 5000, I already have a new project set up and ready to go. I'll begin here by adding the PBS module to the project. Under the Ethernet connections, I'll right click and add a new module. In the Select Module window, I'll type PBS to filter the results. And once you've found the PLX51 PBS, select it and click Create. This AOP will only work for Logix version 21 or higher, by the way. In the New Module window, give the module a name and enter the IP address that you assigned back in the Configuration Utility. We'll click Change under Module Properties, and here is where you set up the I.O. connections. Now, I only have one connection for this training, so I don't have to do anything, but if you do have two or more, you'll need to be sure to add them in here. Now, we'll bring in the ladder file that we exported. So, under Main Task, go to Main Program, right-click, and choose Import Routine. Choose the L5X file that we exported and click Import. 
In the import window, you can see the tags that the routine is bringing in. Note that the name for the input and output under final name needs to match the name that we gave the PLX51 PBS under the general tab back in the configuration utility. Now I just gave it the name that I knew would be generated here. Otherwise, you can edit the names here to match what you entered in the configuration utility. Just know that if it doesn't match, you'll see an error here. So now we can open up the main routine and bring in a jump to subroutine with the routine name being my PLX51 PBS map. And you can just remove the other parameters. I'll verify the project just to be sure that no silly mistakes have been made so far. Then I can go up to communications, who active, and select download. And my compact logics will receive the new configuration, and when it's done, we'll go online. We're done with Studio 5000 for now. We'll jump back into the configuration utility and just right click on the PLX51 in the Explorer view and select download. This will download the project to the PBS and take the gateway online. If we take a quick look at the device status, we can see that we are online but not connected, as evidenced by the orange color here. To complete the configuration, we'll open up Siemens Totally Integrated Automation Software, or TIA Portal. I'll be using this to import the GSD, or General Station Description file, for the PLX51 and get my Profibus Master talking to the gateway. I already have a project up and running with an S7 controller already added, so We'll go to the project view, and from here, we can go up to options and install our GSD. This will identify the PLX51 for the S7 controller. You can get the GSD for the PBS from the product page on the ProSoft website. So once you have the file, select it and click install. When it's done, we get a message that the installation was completed successfully, and you can close the window. So now we'll add our slave device. In the device view, you can see we have a rack with a controller in slot one. I'll go to the network view tab and then click on the hardware catalog tab over on the right side of the interface. Here we can drill down, locate our PLX51 gateway. You can just type PBS into the filter to locate it quickly. Now once you get to the PBS itself, drag and drop it into the network view with the controller. We want to connect this slave to the controller's DP interface one. So just click on the purple Profibus port icon on the module and drag it to the corresponding port on the S7. Right click on the gateway and select device configuration. Now select the hardware catalog tab over on the right again. I'm going to drag two input 16 byte nodes from the catalog list into the device overview window. I'll also grab a couple of output 16 byte nodes and drag them over as well. You can now see the input and output modules in the device overview window. So we can close the hardware catalog and still in the device view, if you click on the slave and look under the general Profibus parameters, you can see the node address, highest address, and transmission speed for the device. Now you can change the address, but the rest are determined by the master. So just be sure that what you have in the configuration utility matches what you're seeing here. So now we'll switch over to the network view. This is a good time to save the project. We should be ready to download. So we'll begin by selecting the S7 controller and compiling the configuration. When it's done, we'll go ahead and download. Now, if you haven't already connected to the controller, you'll need to select your interface information that TIA will use to connect to. Now, once it's finished, we'll go online. Our connection between the S7 processor and the Profibus port on the gateway is now up and running. And if all has gone well, you should see green check marks here. Now, if we return to ProSoft Configuration Utility, at this point I can see that my slave devices 
are showing up green in the Project Explorer view. Everything should be connected and communicating at this point. The PLX51 status form displays a number of communication and technical statistics. Under general statistics, we can see how many bytes are being exchanged, the current baud rates, uptime, firmware revision, port status, for instance. Under the slave status tab, you can see the comm state, which indicates a connection to the Profibus master, as well as communication stats. The Profibus slave device's status can also be monitored by right-clicking on the device and selecting the status menu item. This is very handy if you're troubleshooting a device that's not appearing on the network. You can just open this up and see if it's online. Is it exchanging data? Is it enabled in the PLC program? Along with several other flags that alert you to specific problems. Also, if we right-click on the PLX51 in the Project Tree view, we can select the DP Packet Capture Utility. This opens the Packet Capture window, and the PLX51 will automatically start capturing all Profibus packets, and will continue doing so until you press the Stop button, or once it's captured 10,000 packets. Now, once the capture process has stopped, the data is presented in a table like this. All the packets are displayed in the order that they were captured, and you can see the time is here in microseconds. We also have the direction, either transmit or receive, the packet status, the source and the destination of the packet, the function, and finally the raw data over on the right side here. You can save these captures by clicking the disk icon up in the toolbar. Finally, we'll return to Studio 5000 and take a look at the tags. You can see an entry for the PLX51 PBS, My PLX51 PBS, input and output. Now the exact name here will depend on the name that you use. Now the input and output tag labeling here is a little unusual. Under output, you find output.input. This is the Compact Logics output data that will be the input data for the S7 master on the Profibus side. So the output input tags will represent data that our S7 master receives from the Compact Logics through the Profibus port on the PLX51 gateway, which it will regard as a slave. So you can see if I enter a value in the tags here, it will appear as input data to my S7. Conversely, if I enter an output integer in the S7 watch table, I can return to Studio 5000 and I'll find it in the input output tags. So this is data coming from the S7 Profibus master being written to our gateway and then to our compact logics. So just remember, on the Ethernet IP side, inside Studio 5000, the input and output label is reckoned for the Ethernet IP side of things. It will be the opposite for the master on the Profibus side. So that's pretty much it for this training. If you have any questions or would like more information about the PLX51 PBS, use the link in the description to go to its product page or feel free to give us a call. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you're interested in more training and educational videos about industrial communication technology and gear, subscribe to our channel. Until next time, happy training.